let's talk about consignment sales. So consignment sales are a great way to get inventory for free. If you're struggling with cash flow, it's an awesome opportunity to work with your neighbors, your friends, people from church, your community, wherever you can track down books. It's a great way to get them for free, help out some friends at the same time, and you can both earn some money. Now, I prefer to just pay cash for books, then they're mine, and it's up to me whether I can sell enough of them to earn a profit. That's my preferred mechanism, but consignment sales uh, have, have been fairly beneficial as well. Every once in a while, it's hard to come to a fair price when you're trying to buy books, and you can just say, hey, I've got a system. I can track everything. I can give you reports, and I'll pay you once a month, and let me sell your books on consignment, and sometimes that's a pretty good opportunity as well. If, uh, if you want to go try and fry some bigger fish, you could even probably try and work out deals with thrift stores or library sales, um, and that'd be a good opportunity to sell on consignment for them as well. The way we've got the spreadsheet set up is you can do two different opportunities or two different offerings when it comes to your commission agreements. My standard deal, as you can see here, and I've got just a couple samples that I've done, I usually take 20% of gross sales. Now, the reason I do that is uh, most people typically do like 50-50 split or they'll take 40% of gross sale or of net sales. I like to do 20% because it sounds smaller, but I do it of gross sales. So basically, if they sell $100 worth of uh, books, I'm going to take $20, then Amazon's going to take their fees, then I'm going to reimburse for the inbound shipping, any disposals that happens, and whatever is left goes back to the customer. And it depends on the average selling price, but in most cases, if I take 20% off the top, I end up getting a third of the net profit and give the, the customer two-thirds. So it's a little bit of a marketing play. I'm not trying to be intentionally dishonest, but I, I'm very upfront. I take 20% of gross sales. It's a, it's a nice smallish number, but it makes it worth my time in most cases. The other option I'll typically do is like a 50-50 net profit split. Most people are fairly open to that. Um, and I'll show, we'll walk through this and show you how it works. We can track everything at a source level from inbound shipping to disposal costs, to sales, to refunds, to reimbursements. The only thing we can't track because Amazon doesn't provide this at the SKU level is storage fees and long-term storage fees. Now with most books, this is fairly irrelevant, even with the new long-term storage fees that have been implemented. Um, here's a couple things to keep in mind. On an average book, your, your monthly storage fees are gonna be two, maybe three cents a month. A textbook, maybe six to 10 cents a month for storage. So it's not gonna break the bank. Um, Long-term storage fees, if you haven't sold it after six months, on um, by February 15 or August 15, you're gonna be charged on a typical book 30 cents. A textbook could be 50 or 60, if not a little bit higher. So you can get hit with some fees. That's why it's important to take a big enough commission amount to factor that in but let's walk through everything else. So the way to set this up is you put the name of someone on your source. So I'm gonna, I got Andrea here for the sake of this example. Now it's already gonna pull in all the data from her. Now this is somebody I actually just paid cash for her books. I offered $4 a book for everything that I wanted. She sold me 26 books, a, a fair amount of textbooks, and I was able to sell those over the next couple months. You can see here, uh, again, we're tracking everything. We've listed 26 books, 22 sold, 85%. I just I can see the total list price just so I know what the quality of the books were. I get to see the total sales. And remember, this number includes sales, reimbursements if Amazon lost the inventory or damaged it in the warehouse. It also subtracts out any refunds that came back in. And if somebody refunded it and then never sent it back in and the refund is reversed, it'll add that back in. So this is a true number on total sales. I've got costs here. And remember, usually if I'm doing a consignment deal, I put $0 in. And that way, I don't have to pay anything to get the inventory. This is just an example, so this isn't how I normally do the commission, but I wanna show you how this works. Inbound shipping, we can see it was about $14 for this particular batch. Amazon's fees based on the sales were 156. And again, this will also deduct Amazon fees on uh, refunded books as well. Disposal fees, looks like we trashed one of these books. And so we get a net profit number, which includes sales minus any costs if they're involved, so this is cost of inventory, minus inbound shipping, minus Amazon's fees, minus disposal fees. So net profit at the end of the day was 153. Now, here's the way this works. If we're gonna do a 50-50 split, we're gonna see that the net profit is gonna be split each way. Uh, I got it set to round down for you if there's a half penny involved and round up for your customer. Um, just kind of makes it a little bit nicer. If it's an even number here on the net profit, if it was 153.80, the numbers would match exactly. But in this case, we're gonna give the extra penny to the customer. 
So the way this is set up then, I can see that I've made this much money. And again, it's basically factoring in that I've already paid myself back for these costs since we're splitting net profit. If we split this and did, let's say 20% off the top, then it's not gonna factor in the costs. Um, so my revenue is gonna be 20% of sales, which is 85 bucks, and she's gonna get the rest. So in this case, it does pay you back for costs. I, I uh, misspoke there. Now make sure you don't put um, percentages in both columns because the spreadsheet won't know what to do. It's actually gonna default to looking at sales first. So in this case, if we're doing 50-50 split, make sure the spreadsheet's set up this way. Again, like pretty much everywhere else on the spreadsheet, if it's in green, if the cells are green, that's something you should be typing in. Anything here, do not mess around. You'll, you'll, you'll mess up the spreadsheet. We do have some totals at the top so you can get a feel of how your overall deals are going. So in this case, you can see your revenue at about $3,400 and you've paid out $8,000 and hopefully have uh, earned yourself some closer friends as a result. Um, here is the amount owed. So in this case for Andrea, we see that we owe her $76.91. We've paid her in the past $31.18, so we still owe her $45.73. When it's time to pay, you can simply match up the source here so we can go add a new line. So we type Andrea here, we put the date, we put the amount that we owe her, which in this case was the $45.73. And then I usually pay with bank deposit, so EFT or you can do PayPal or check or just whatever, and just a, a, an option for you to know how you were paying them. Now I wanna show you the reports that we've built as well. Um, some people will trust you and they don't need to see reports and you can just cut them a check. I typically pay once a month for people I sell on consignment for, um, but I've also created a, a dashboard as well, which looks similar to the source dashboard, but this is set up. And again, it's got the drop down list of all of our sources here, and it will update and show what your agreement is. So in this case, let's go back to Andrea. And these will be in the order they appear on the source or on the consignment sales sheet. So we, it automatically pulls in that our, uh, we're doing a 50% net profit split. You can enter your dates here and I'll show you how to tweak these in just a second. Again, you get the recommended start date and then the chart is gonna default to show you the last, um, the most recent several months. Um, what it does here is it shows us the sales, any reimbursements or refunds, so gross sales, that exactly matches what was on the consignment sales tab. It shows the inbound shipping, Amazon's fees, inventory removal, and then inventory costs. And if you do add any prep costs, you could add those into actual cost of the book. So let's say you get the books for free, but you have to pay someone 50 cents a book to list them. You could actually add 50 cents a book and it would show up on this sheet and you could actually pay back your employees that way, depending on how you set up your um, commission agreements. So here we've got our overall metrics, sales to date, profits to date, which of course just equals this number, earnings to date, this would be for the, the client or your customer, and then payments to date, so this is how much you owe. Now the date range here will actually impact this period. So I typically pay on a monthly basis. You can see here we haven't re we sold most of her items, they were pretty much textbooks. Sold most of them in August, September. Looks like we've sold two books since then. So what you could do is if you wanna actually see what you've sold, let's say from December 1, 16 through today, it'll show consignment fees this period, 237 and commissions earned. And again, this is a 50-50 split. So this could actually work if you've been paying every month and were caught up, I wasn't in this particular example. This would show you what you owe this period. It would show that this is still the overall earnings to date and then the payments to date and then the amount owed. So this is fairly flexible spreadsheet. This is gonna make sure you don't over underpay what's due. So you'd basically spit out this chart and it's set up that you can export this um, as a PDF. So if you went up to file, you can't quite see it up there and say save as, you could save this sheet. And what you're gonna to wanna to do actually is you're gonna to wanna to highlight everything in the sheet. So I wouldn't get the recommended start day. I'm just gonna go on the left side and I'm gonna drag this down past all my charts. and go a little bit further. Again, you can hold shift and then click and extend it down just like that. So now that we're highlighted, we're gonna to go to save, uh, file, save as, and then whatever we're gonna call this, so we'd probably just give it the client's name, Andrea report, you know, 331.17. We're gonna save this as a PDF, and then you're gonna say selection, and it's just gonna grab what's, what's selected here, and you can save it to the desktop. Once you've saved that, it's gonna spit out a several page report, which then you can email to the client along with uh, uh, an e-payment or um, 
you could actually print out and give them as well. So here you got your reports. It's set up beautifully and it gives the customer all the information they need. If you want to plug your own logo in here, feel free to change the spreadsheet. And then it gives them that inventory snapshot as well. So they know they still have three books that could sell, but at this point they've pretty much got everything that's going to be, that's going to be sold. So again, the metrics here are gonna be very similar to what we've seen on the other pages. We can see the sales over time. We can see the average selling price. And again, that's more for your benefit, but the clients like to see it and know that you're tracking their inventory very carefully. We can see the items listed. We just bought one batch and we listed them over time and you can see how many have sold each month. The total inventory, again, we're down to just a handful of books. The turn rate as they've sold, and then the cash flow and the inventory snapshot, just like we've had before. So that's how to set it up for your sources. Again, it's really powerful to be able to give them this data, especially if you're working with more corporate clients. This is a very impressive way to stand out from, from the rest of people trying to offer them commission deals. So that's pretty much it when it comes to commissions. Again, um, you can just change these and look at you know what's there. Let me show you one other thing. So for this particular person, again, it shows you the recommended start date. Um, but again, I typically pay monthly. So we'd show the date range for this particular month. We've only sold one book. Most of their items have already sold. You know, consignment fees here, commissions for the individual because we sold a cheap book and I'm taking 20% off the top. By the time Amazon got their fees, there was actually negative sales. Um, shame on me. I had my, my, you know, sale prices set too low. This is one I probably should have just disposed of versus selling. So that's up to you to kind of manage those. And uh, I make mistakes as well. So that's just a piece of the business. Um, if we did a bigger range here, we'd see this, you know, a little bit better numbers. We'd show that we've made $30 for this period. They've earned 36, but overall I've paid 548 and they've earned 619 up through the end of this period here. So I still owe 7140. Now you wanna print this sheet before you actually record the payment. Otherwise it's gonna show zero. So I'd write a check for $71.40. Then I'm going to come over to consignment sales, hit command or control down arrow. I'm going to write winter. I'm going to put the date. And I'm going to put the uh, amount owed, which I believe was 7141. Yep. And I'm going to just say check. And then I usually write the, the check number as well. So you could put like 2401. And now, not only does this update and say, hey, we're paid up, I don't owe winter anything else, but if you go to the commission dashboard, it's gonna show that as well. Now every once in a while, because of half pennies and rounding and whatnot, you're gonna see things that are off by just a penny. If that bothers you too much, you can uh, kind of manipulate or underpay by a penny or try and figure that out. Um, it won't be off by any more than that. Unfortunately, just with partial pennies, that's the way it is. So that's it for commissions. And again, a really powerful way to grow your business. And especially if cash is tight, this is a great way to get inventory for free, sell it on consignment, and find a way to, uh, to earn some cash that you can then go buy your own inventory.